Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for your children. Thank you for all of us who are here today. We come to study your word. And we pray that every one of us will derive benefit from your word in Jesus' name. We pray that the word will be light in our pathway. You direct and lead us in the right direction in Jesus' name. We pray that you bless our youth as a study with us. Bless the adults too, the newcomers and our regular members. We pray, oh Lord, that your word will enrich our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We're making progress in our study of the Bible. We're now in First Peter chapter 2 and we're in verses 1 to 3. Please open your Bible as we read together. We are falling aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Here the apostle continues the theme and the thoughts already taught in chapter 1. He has spoken about the new life. And that new life begins when we are born again. But then he tells us as natural babies grow, spiritual babies in the Lord too, they grow. That means that in our spiritual life, we ought to grow. He has spoken about uh, the God who in his abundant mercy has begotten us again. Which means we are born again and now that we are children of God, that means members of the family of God. He reminds us that we are to live as obedient children. That's in chapter 1 verse 14. And then in verses 22 and 23, he reminds us that being born again, we are to love one another with a pure heart fervently. Now the apostle wants to continue and is addressing an important subject, a practical subject indeed. And that is the subject of the growth of believers. If you look at verse 2, he says, As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby and then he grounds that he brings he gives us the foundation he says if so be that you have tasted that the lord is gracious you will see that he begins in verse one by saying wherefore the word wherefore is like the word therefore it links us with the latter part of chapter one being born again he implies called to love one another he implies we're now to lay aside everything that is contrary to the law of love because all these things will hinder our spiritual growth it will hinder our relationship with god and with one another what are we to lay aside he gives us right there they are the evil things that characterize the heathen world he says all these things must be laid aside and then we are to passionately desire and long for the word of God. Taking that word of God as newborn babes will take in milk that will make them to have growth. So then we are learning today about how to grow in our spiritual life. The subject is natural nourishment or spiritual nourishment for steady growth. There are three points we are going to consider. Number one, hindrances to spiritual growth hindrances to spiritual growth number two hungry souls desiring god's word for steady growth steady growth in number three then hearts that have tasted the savior's grace we're looking at it from number one number one hindrances to spiritual growth it says in verse one wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. He tells us there are two things. If you are going to grow, there is something to put off, and then there is something to put on. And he, he starts in the negative. In the negative, he says, these are negative things. They are like spiritual diseases. If you have them on, you will not grow. In fact, you will retrogress instead of progressing. You will be going back instead of moving forward. 
you will be having stunted growth or you might even eventually backslide instead of moving on in the Lord. The new birth is just the beginning of the spiritual life coming from that comes from God by his free grace. But then that new man, he grows. Just as the natural people grow, spiritual men too, we grow. And that growth is not a spontaneous automatic thing. If we're going to grow, it's going to require some effort on our part. That means we're going to show that we desire to grow. We want to know God more. We want to be uh, praying earnestly and be earnest in our watchfulness and in constant self-denial. Growth demands that uh, there are some negative influences we're going to avoid. There are some things we're going to put aside. There are some things we're going to lay off. There are some things we're not going to permit to allow in our lives. And it tells us what those things are. You must know that the list in verse 1 is not exhaustive, but it mentions some. It says, laying aside, number one, all malice. It says malice, and then it says, all species, all kinds, all shapes and sizes of malice. We must lay everything aside. If we're going to grow, what's malice? It's a desire to hurt somebody. It may be a slight thought in your mind. Or it may be a deep-seated, deadly passion in your mind that you are after that individual. You want to hurt him. He has hurt you. You are meditating and you, you are thinking about what you are going to do to him because of what he has done to you. He says, are you not a born-again Christian, a child of God? Lay that aside. And then he mentions another thing. He says, lay aside all guile. Guile there uh, means uh, you are going to lay aside uh, lack of openness, lack of straightforwardness. There are some people that apply deception and guile in their dealing with people. It says that's going to hinder you. It will not allow your spiritual life to grow. And then it says we're also to lay aside hypocrisies in the plural. It says this kind of hypocrisy, lay it aside. Whatever form it is, whether it is silent hypocrisy, or a loud hypocrisy, whether it's a magnified hypocrisy, or a diminished hypocrisy, whether it's a hypocrisy of the illiterate, or the hypocrisy of the educated, all forms and all kinds of hypocrisy, lay everything aside. What's hypocrisy? Hypocrisy is attempt to pretend and present ourselves to be who we are not. We want to pose a, a better portrait, a better picture than we are. It says that's hypocrisy. And it is a mark, the trademark of the Pharisees laid aside. And then he mentions another thing. He says envies. Envies, uh, that brings in jealousy, that brings in envying other people because of what they have got, which we have not got. Whether they are spiritual things, material things, or domestic things, that they have got, we have not got, lay everything aside. And then it says all evil speaking. And I say lot in that. Gossiping, backbiting, speaking evil of other people, slandering other people to injure their personalities, injure their person, injure their good names, lay all that aside. Now, incidentally, it is not just uh, in this passage alone, we have these things that we have to lay aside. We have it all through scripture, that if we're going to grow, we're going to lay all these things aside. Look at Job chapter 22. In Job 22, reading verses 22 and 23, is uh, telling us if we're going to be acquainted with God. In verse 21, it says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace and thereby good shall come unto thee receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his watch in thine heart then he says in verse 23 if thou return to the almighty thou shalt be built up it's like he's talking about those who are growing those who are maturing those who are developing you'll be built up and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles and what he means by iniquity, already Peter defines it for us. All malice, all guile, hypocrisies, envies, all evil speaking. We're going to put that far away from us if we're going to experience spiritual growth. As I told you, you put that up that you may put on uh, some good, beautiful character, conduct, characteristics of the Christian life. In Ephesians chapter 4, 
we were still told the same thing. It, this must be very, very important for the scripture to mention it over and over and over again. In Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 21, it says, uh, If so be that ye have heard him, and have been touched by him, as the truth is in Christ, in Jesus. He's talking about the people that know the Lord, they love the Lord, they have experienced the Lord. There is an ongoing relationship with the Lord. He said, if that is so, put on something and put on another thing. Verse 22, that she put up concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. He says, there is something to put up, the old manner of life, the old conduct, the former conversation. In verse 25, wherefore, put in a way lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. It says we are uh, members of the body of Christ. We are compacted together. We relate together. We are brothers and sisters. We are going to speak truth with one another. We put away lying. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. It says there's another thing to put up. That's evil communication. That's evil speaking. That slander, the gossiping, the backbiting, the, uh, the hurting people with our words. Then it says in verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. But I told you as there is something to put up, there is something to put on. Uh, have you, uh, we do that every day. You want to take your bath, you put off your clothes, then you take your bath, then you put on your clothes. If you put off the clothes and you don't put on the clothes, then you will not be able to go out. There is a putting off. There is a putting on. If you are going to relate normally and live a normal life. And therefore it is not enough that we put off the negative. We must put on the positive. That's exactly what Paul is saying in Ephesians chapter 4. Look at it now in verse 24. And that you put on. The new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And then in verse 32, and that and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Do you see what he's saying? Put off the negative, put on the positive. Put off the filthy dress of the former life and now put on the new garment of righteousness that befits the new life. In Colossians chapter 3, you still find the same emphasis of the word of God. But always remember, like uh, the two hands of the body, like the two legs of the body, there, is the, there are the two parts, something to put off and something to put on. In uh, Colossians chapter 3, Reading there from verse 8, it says, But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, feel the communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing ye are put off the old man with his deeds. But remember, anytime you have something to put off, then you have something to put on. Verse 10, now what to put on? And I put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image that is created uh, after the image of him that created him and then in verse 12 put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved be and, and beloved powers of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forgiving forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man has a quarrel against an even as christ forgave you. You will see there that as you put off, then you also put on. If you put off uh, those negative things and you didn't put on the, the good things, then you will not have completed it. You'll be like uh, the, uh, the, the fellow that put off his clothes and tried to take his bath and then he came out uh, naked. People are going to be thinking there is something wrong. And do you know there are many, many so-called Christians their joy and their testimony is, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't abuse, I don't insult, I don't fight, I don't keep malice. That's all right. That's only half the deal. It means you are put up. But what have you put on? Have you put on Christ? Have you put on love? Have you put on the good characteristics of the Christian life? 
you put up the negative, that's not enough. You put on the positive. See an illustration in Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. Reading from verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And uh, unto him he said, Behold, I have caused the iniquity uh, to pass from thee. That means uh, the negative things are gone. Iniquity is uh, taken away, is blotted out. The negative, filthy things, everything is taken away like the filthy garment. But look at what follows. And I will close thee with change of raiment. That still emphasizes the fact you put off what is wrong and you put on what is good. And the word of God then assures us if we're real Christians, uh, what are sought, we are put off all malice. We are put off all guile. We are put off all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. In Proverbs chapter 23, Proverbs chapter 23, reading in verse 17, Proverbs 23, Verse 17, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. That's why the Lord is saying pray through Peter, put it up. There should be no envy at all. You will see them in your places of work. You will see them in your community. You will see the way they are bragging, the way they are proud. Because of what they think they have, he says, don't envy them. You are a child of God. You have what money cannot buy. You have what they do not have. There will be no envy in your life at all. And even when you come into the church, you will have some people having some opportunities that you do not have. You will not envy them because God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondly prophets, after the teachers and workers of miracles and administration and helps and all things. You will not envy them. It is the purpose of God that... Uh, you will do what you are doing. Others will do what they are doing. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Provoking one another. Envying one another. Proverbs tells us. Don't envy the people in the world. And Galatians tell us. That you will not envy the people in the church. We will not envy envy one another you will praise the lord for one another for the privileges and opportunities the lord has given them instead of envying them in titus chapter 3 titus chapter 3 reading there in verse 1 and verse 2 put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers and to be magistrates and to be ready to every good work now here comes at the next line to speak evil of no man. Even if they have done things that you feel those things are wrong. They shouldn't have done that. Uh, you can pray for them. You can go to them. You can correct them in love. But you will speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers. That means you will not be shouting on people. Bullying on people. Terrorizing people. To be no brawlers. But gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. That's the Christian life. And that is what the Lord is expecting from us. Our lives should be characterized by uh, the conduct of Christ. Uh, the way we speak and the things we do. In First Peter chapter 3 verse 10. First Peter chapter 3. We're looking at verse 10. It says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his leaves that they speak no girl. It means that if we're going to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, we will not hurt other people with our words, with our mouth. Anything we say, it will not be to hurt anyone. We're children of God, and to prove that we're children of God, all we're to do is to love one another with a pure heart, fervently. And if we're going to do that and obey the law of love, every time in relationship to one another, we're going to make sure that we lay aside all malice, lay aside all guile, lay aside all hypocrisies, lay aside all forms of envies, and lay aside all evil speaking. But then uh, the apostle tells us, we still are going to move on if we're going to grow. I come to verse 2 now. It says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. 
here the uh, apostle strikes the chord uh, of the string of our heart because this is the desire of every child of God. Immediately you come into the Christian fold, you are born again. There is a desire in your heart. You want to grow. You want to develop. You want to mature. You want to move forward in the way of the Lord. And then you say, sir, we're going to do that. As newborn babes, we're going to desire the sincere milk of the world that ye may grow thereby. To start with, we need to understand that as there are babes in the natural family, so there are babes in the family of God as well. If you look at Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, reading from verses 20 and 21, you will see what Jesus Christ said when he was talking about the family of God, about the people that have been born into the kingdom. He says, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. These are people that are born again and their names have been written in the book of life in heaven. And then in verse 21 it says, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. Those are the religious people of the land. But have revealed, has revealed them unto babes. That's the word. You may want to underline that. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. It tells us here that those whose names are written in the book of life, they are babes in Christ. And it was referring to adults, you know. Some of them were even married. He sent them out, 70 of them. He sent them two by two. And he gave them the word of the gospel. And they went to preach to people. These adults that went to preach to people. And many people repented. And they cast out devils. And many people were healed. They came back and gave him testimony. He called them babes. Which means then, as we look at ourselves, although in the natural, in the physical, we are adults. Some of us even parents. But we're still babes in the Lord. And he's uh, saying that as newborn babes, we're to grow. And how are we to grow? He tells us the way we're to grow. Please come back to First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world. What he's saying is, as natural babes, desire milk that they will grow. Even so, we Christians should desire uh, the milk of the word of God that we will grow. Now, all of us, in a sense, can be termed as babes in the Lord. We know that there are real babes in the Lord, those who have just been born again. But when you compare what we are now with what we shall be in eternity, we are just like babes in the Lord right now in comparison. And we want to grow. We want to move forward. We want to make progress in our Christian lives. If we're going to do that, then we need the milk of the world so that we will be able to grow. If we do not take the word of God, then we will not grow. It's only when we take the milk of the word that we will grow. In Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, reading there, in verse 4. Matthew chapter 4. Reading in verse 4. Here Jesus he answered and said. It is written. Man shall not lay by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here Jesus Christ said. As uh, we take food for our natural growth and development. Even so the word of God must be taken. For our spiritual and steady growth. And hungry souls that desire to grow must take in the word of God so that there will be steady growth by the word of God. Incidentally, Jesus Christ was quoting that from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading there in verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. A which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee to know that man does not live, does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. 
the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why we're coming every time here and we are taking in the word of God like milk uh, taken in by the babes so that we will grow. But you might say, I know some people that seem to be studying the word and yet they are not growing and you are wondering why. And maybe you yourself, you are saying, I read the Bible, I study the Bible, like, there's no day that passes by that I do not study a part of the Bible, and I do not see myself growing. You say, can you tell me why? Jesus Christ told the parable of the sow of the seed. In Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, reading there from verse 11. Now, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. And it's not going to give us uh, the, the different categories of people that hear the word of God. And unfortunately, they are not growing. It says in verse 12, Those by the wayside are they, are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest uh, they should believe and be saved. There are people that hear the word of God and they do not understand what they hear. They hear and then they go out and in a few minutes they have forgotten everything. And the content of what they have heard, the power of what they have heard is taken away from them. And uh, when they come the following time, they come empty. They come knowing nothing. They come as if they never came before. Because what they had before, the devil has taken it away. He didn't bear any fruit in their lives. In verse 13, they on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And uh, these have no root, which, ha which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. It says there's another category of people. They hear the word of God and they receive it with joy. They appreciate the word, but then it doesn't bear any fruit because it doesn't have deep root in their hearts. When temptations come, they forget what they have learned. They forget everything they have been, they have been storing in their system and they still fall away into the hands of the devil. In verse 14, that that which fell among songs are they, which when they have heard, they go forth and are choked with cares and riches and the pleasures of this life. And they, brought, they bring uh, no fruit to perfection. There are some other people, they are hearing the word of God, but there's so much cares of this world. Uh, uh, they, 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 they pursue it after the riches of the things of the world and the pleasures of life. And they choke the word of God they are hearing and they are not able to bear fruit. If we're going to bear fruit, it means that all those things that hinder growth we will not allow them in our lives so that we can move forward and bear fruit by the word of the Lord. But uh, let's move on, that if we're going to grow, we need to keep on desiring the sincere milk of the word of God so that we will grow thereby. It means that we'll appreciate the word of God, we'll desire the word of God, we'll be hungry for the word of God, we will take the word of God regularly, like we take our meals regularly, we will digest the word of God, like we try to digest the food we eat so it can benefit our body, and then we'll live by that word as we exercise ourselves after eating, so that uh, the, the food, uh, the spiritual food, will do something marvelous deliberate or definite in our lives. In Job chapter 23, Job chapter 23, verse 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's the attitude we ought to have towards the word of God. The word of God should be so esteemed and so honored, so appreciated, and we take it regularly because we regard that word more than our necessary food. We take it in the morning before we take our breakfast and we take it in the evening before we go to sleep. Then we know that we really appreciate the word of God and we esteem that word more than our necessary food. Jeremiah had that same experience in Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15 in verse 16. Here the, word, the words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me, uh, the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. If you are called by the name of the Lord, that means you are born again. 
That means you are a child of God. You realize what the Lord is requesting from you, requiring from you, that you'll take in that word. It will be the joy of your heart. You will really appreciate it. And uh, the moment of studying the word of God will be a kind of joyful period. It will not be like uh, children when their parents wake them up in the morning uh, to come and uh, have money devotion, family devotion. Uh, they frown the face, they are unhappy, some of them are even crying. They don't have appreciation for the word of God. Or when they are to have the family devotion in the evening, uh, it's then they remember that they have not done their homework and they tell daddy and mommy, I don't think I can do that today because the teacher will beat me tomorrow if I don't take the time and do my homework. It is only at that time they remember the homework. But uh, it will be the joy of your heart, the delight of your heart. When you really love God, you will love the word of God. And that word will do something. It will be a fruit. It will make you to grow. That's why the psalmist tells us, Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3. Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3. Let me back up to verse 1. So you will follow through on what we are saying. There is a negative to put off. There is a positive to put on. Blessed is a man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor seated in the seat of discomfort. That's the negative. You push that aside. You put part, that part away from you. You separate yourself from the way of the sinner. And then the positive numbers too. But it's delight, it's joy, it's desire. It's in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate. Day and night does he bear any fruit in his life for years. Verse 3. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I pray we will prosper in Jesus name. But if we are going to prosper that is it right there. We will need to make sure that we are taking in the word of God. So that. We can grow spiritually. What does it mean to grow spiritually? Both Job and Solomon tell us in Job chapter 17. Job chapter 17. There in verse 9. Job 17 verse 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way. And he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. That's what it means to grow. If you are growing in the Lord, you are taking in the milk of the word of God. You are taking in the food, the meat of the word of God. You are taking in the honey of the word of God. You are drinking in the water of the word of God. You are benefiting from the word that is being preached every time. You will be stronger and stronger in the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light. And shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Shining more and more unto the perfect day. It's the, it's the more and more, is the growing, is the development, is the maturity that we are calling spiritual growth. But as we talk about this spiritual growth, how do you know that, that you are really growing? Uh, because uh, many people will say, I don't really know what we're talking about when we talk about spiritual growth. Because I look at my life today and I don't know whether I am growing or I am not growing. I know I'm not committing sin. I know I'm not living in sin. But as to whether I'm growing or not, I really don't understand about this spiritual growth. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It says, I put it this way, here is Christ in the fullness of his measure. In the measure of his fullness, spiritually. And here you are, you look very small, you are like a little baby. You compare the characteristics and conduct of your life with that of Christ. And as you make the comparison, the one of the Lord Jesus Christ is so big and so full and so ripe and so nourishing. And as you look at your own, it's so very, very small. And then it's becoming bigger, getting nearer and nearer to that of Christ. That is the growth we are talking about or that the Bible is talking about in a Peter, First Peter, 
in first peter chapter 2 and then we'll look at chapter at second peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 2 reading there in verse 2 it says as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby grow thereby and then in second peter chapter 3 verse 18 but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord jesus of our lord and savior jesus christ now he begins to break it down he begins to explain to us what it means to grow number one then what it means it means to grow in grace the grace to be what you ought to be the grace to do what you ought to do the grace to endure what you need to endure can you endure more today than you were able to endure last year that's growth are you doing today more than you did last year? That's growth. You are growing in the grace of God. Because Paul the Apostle said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Then he mentions what he did in the kingdom of God. What you are doing then is by the grace of God. If you are doing more today than you did before, then you are growing. Not only that, number two, it means to grow in law. We have love when we're children of God. But then if you're growing in love, you find it easier to forgive today than you were able to forgive one year ago. You find it easier to give in love than you were able to do one year ago. You find it easier to serve today than you were able to do one year ago. You are growing in love. That's what it means to grow. Number three, it means you are growing in faith. The faith to receive. When you pray, you are able to receive today what you were not able to pray and receive last year. You are growing in faith. The faith to minister to the needs of other people. You are able to deal with today greater problems in the lives of people than you were able to deal with some years ago. That means your faith is growing. Number four, it means you are growing in the spirit. The wisdom of the Lord and the understanding of the Spirit. You know many times in your own life, in my own life too, that uh, you are dealing with a problem and then you just didn't have the wisdom to deal with it. The understanding to deal with it. Say, I don't understand this. I can't handle this. I can't deal with this. But then a year after, two years after, similar situations come in your life. You have grown in the spirit. And because you have grown in the spirit, there is more wisdom now. There is more understanding now. What you are not able to deal with the wisdom you didn't have at that time, you have it now. That's growth. Number five, it means you are growing in Christ. More like Christ. The meekness of Christ, the humility of Christ, the gentleness of Christ. You see that, uh, you know, you were impatient before. You were born again, but impatient. But now you see that you are growing in Christ. You are patient with people now, more than before. Maybe the patience is not perfected yet, but at least it's more than what it used to be. That a uh, growing in Christ, being more like Christ, that's what is called growth. Number six, it means you are growing in holiness. You are holy before by the grace of God. You will not uh, go into sin. But now it becomes easier for you. Uh, the things you will not do, you just find that your interest is not there. They are simple things. They are, they are bad, bad things. You are not struggling about it anymore. You just find it easy to say, no, I can't do that. No, I don't want that. It's not even in my heart. I don't desire it at all. You are growing in Holiness. It also means number seven. You are growing in soul winning zeal. If you are growing in, if you are growing in the Lord, it means that your zeal to win souls is just growing. Today you are more conscious about the lost souls, more than you were one year ago, more than you were some time ago. That is the growth we are talking about. When you find that today you are zealous, today you are earnest, today you, you are just pursuing after those souls, you are following them up, and if we are giving you those cards a year ago, two years ago, you will not even know where you put them. But now there is growth. Number eight, it means that you are growing in your desired longing for heaven. Uh, before uh, you knew heaven was there you knew you wanted to get to heaven but the desire was not very very strong and passionate this desire is more today than it was before number nine you are growing in consecration and sacrifice you can sacrifice more now you can give up more things now you can get rid of some of those things now and just give it to other people because uh, you know they need it more than you do that's growth number 10 is like you are growing in good works 
good works. Now you know that in your life, uh, uh, you need to manifest some good works to other people. We are created unto good works. And those things are growing. You are also growing in knowledge. And you are growing in uh, your prayer life. That is the growth. Uh, young people, uh, if you want to know whether you are growing or not, put yourself side by side with Joseph and say, how do I match with Joseph? Look at the life of Joseph as a young man. And look at the life of Samuel when he was very young. How am I comparing with that? As you get nearer and nearer, the life they manifested, the resistance to temptation they manifested, the goodness that they manifested, then you know that really you are growing. And we adults, can you put yourself side by side with Paul the Apostle? Put yourself side by side with John the Beloved. That as you see what is happening, then you know whether you are growing or you are not growing. In First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, reading from verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you, and uh, for his name's sake. In verse 13, I write unto you, fathers, uh, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you. Young men, uh, because ye have uh, overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Can you see stages of Christian life there? Little children, young men, and fathers. And then he gives the characteristics of the children, of the young men, and of the fathers. When you get back home, look at those verses again. And see those characteristics and see where you were some years ago. And where you are now. If you are still at the same spot, then you know that uh, you are not growing. If you have made progress and you have moved from the little child unto the young man, unto the fathers, then you know growth is taking place. Now we come to point number three. It says, if ye have, if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Here we were talking about the people that have tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Of the grace of the Lord. He said, if, the word if there is not a word of doubt. It's a word that implies certainty. Actually, it means since you have tasted of the goodness of the Lord. It says, then you ought to grow to make it a proof that really you have tasted of that goodness of the Lord. When we talk about tasting, what does that mean? In uh, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, he talks about uh, the possibility of tasting the grace of God. And then he mentions uh, those things that we taste, spiritual things uh, really. In Hebrews chapter 6, reading there from verse, uh, from verse uh, 4. In the latter part of verse 4, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted in verse 5 the good word of God and of the powers of the world to come. It actually means that you have tasted of the grace of God, of the word of God, of the fulfillment of the promises of the Lord, and you have seen that the Lord is good. Uh, the grace of God has come to work in your life. In Psalm 34, Psalm 34, uh, there in verse 8, Psalm 34, verse 8, is uh, inviting uh, both children and people that want to know more of the Lord to come and taste of the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. How do we taste the Lord? Trust in him. Believe in him. And then the grace of God will work in your life. How does that grace of God work? Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, all ungodliness, and worldly laws, all worldly laws, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's the, that's the evidence that we have tasted of the grace of the Lord. We have tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Today the Lord has uh, challenged us and the Lord has reminded us that there are things to put up if we're going to grow. And there are things to put on if we're going to grow. As we come to the conclusion of the study, you want to examine your own life. With all these, have you put them up, the things to be put up, where for laying aside? 
all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and all envies and all evil speaking. Are you sure you have laid them aside? Uh, do you do you testify to that every day? At the end of the day, you look at uh, this whole day. Thank God today there was no malice. Thank God today there was no guile, no deception. Thank God today there is no hypocrisy, no envy, and no evil speaking, no gossiping, no backbiting. I was almost tempted to backbite when that fellow began to talk about brass so and so, but God gave me the grace. Can you say that every evening? Every evening you check up, did I put those things far away from me? And then as newborn babes, you desire the sincere milk of the world that you will grow thereby. As you look at your life in the evening today, I did what I couldn't do yesterday. I endured what I couldn't endure before. And I love the way I didn't love before. Thank you, Lord, today because I made progress spiritually today. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, and then in the evening you say, Lord, I tasted your grace today. I manifested your grace today. I was able to do what I wasn't able to do by your grace before. Tomorrow you will help me again. You keep on checking up every day like that. And if you are checking up every day like that, putting up the negative, putting on the positive, your life will grow. It will not be a long time. We might have you as another Paul. We might have you as another Dorcas, another Ruth. And the Lord will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. Examine yourself from the word of God and say, Lord, I want to be the kind of boy I want to be. I ought to be. The kind of girl I ought to be. The kind of man, the kind of woman I ought to be. Are you growing as a Christian? Are you growing as a husband? Are you growing as a wife? Are you growing as a mother? Are you growing as a worker in the church? Are you growing as a good member of the household of faith? Are you growing as a, a, a representative of Christ and as ambassador of Christ? Are you growing in grace? Are you growing in the spirit? Are you growing in love? Are you growing in knowledge? Are you growing in understanding? Are you growing in the ways of the Lord more and more to become like the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you will pray today, the Lord will help you. You will grow.